Man, got around. OG Sim back here. And today, like all days, each and every day, I want to share with you guys some stories of victory. V for victory and G for glory. The victory of understanding that just because you've always done something a certain way, you don't have to continue that way in your lifestyle. And the glory of understanding that change is good and constant change is an evolution of you as a man as you go from becoming a boy into a man or from a nice guy to a real man, from a wimpy, wimpy, simpy bitch boy to a savage barbarian of a man that women fall before your feet, bro. So as always, guys, I want to talk to you guys about my sponsor, Ballin' the Jit. Go over there, man, and look at all the great stuff he has to improve your outer game because the fastest way to change the way you feel about yourself is to change your outer game, your outerwear, the way you dress. It's actually going to change the way you talk and walk and traverse the world. It's very fascinating. I'm going to share a quick story. I remember when I first got out of the University of Life, man, I was, uh, I was working construction because I was homeless, dude. And so I was working day labor. So every day I would get just enough money uh, to stay in one of those cheap hotels, those cheap motels, because I would miss the time it was to get back into the homeless shelter. Because it was funny, the homeless shelter, you got to be there by 5 o'clock in order to get in there. And man, by the time you do day labor, you get off at 5, and by the time you catch the bus, I didn't have a car, you get back to the homeless shelter, it's too late, it's closed. And then I would just stack my chips to get a cheap hotel, which was down the street from the homeless shelter. You know, drug infested, gang infested, just a bunch of prostitution. And so anyway, I would sometimes, uh, sometimes you go to the day labor place, and you have to sign in. And sometimes you wouldn't get called, like you sit there... All you know, all morning they wouldn't call you, so then you just kind of just downtrodden man. You just try to figure out what you're gonna do with your life. Those days I'd make it back to the homeless shelter, and they had a box of clothes that people would donate. So I was wearing these homeless dudes' clothes, and I was pretty yoked and swole back then, just after doing ten years in the University of Life. But one thing I wanted to share with you, why I encourage you to go over to Ballin' Legit. Um, Curtis Thomas taught me that man. If you change the way you dress. People change the way they interface with you. And it changes the way you feel. It's really weird, dude. Like, how your clothes can affect how people treat you and how the way people treat you affects the way you see yourself. So long story short, man, uh, Curtis convinced me to go to college to study computers. And in my first semester, I started working for the actual, the actual uh, college I was in, helping people. I was working in the computer lab, helping people to log in and, use email and stuff like that. So my pay went up. I didn't have to work construction. And Curtis used to tell me, hey man, start going to JC Penney's man and, and and talk to a fashion consultant and really get your outer wear together. And I'm telling you this because I started wearing JC Penney clothes and people started treating me different. You know, the professors started treating me different, of course. Women start treating me different, but that's not what this video is about, this part of the video. So then I was uh, I would go to J.C. Penney's and I would buy a suit for like one hundred dollars. It was a J.C. Penney suit. So fast forward when when uh, Curtis helped me get a job in corporate America, and my my salary dude quadrupled. I went from making you know five hundred a month to uh, three thousand to thirty five thousand a year. And uh, you know Curtis was like, dude, you got to start you know, going to the men's warehouse and get a nice $500 suit. So I want to share this with you because the difference between wearing a $100 suit and a $500 suit is night and day, dude. I put on that $500 suit, people start treating me like the President of the United States, dude, and doors just opened up for me. So then Curtis was like, hey, start getting some, you know, $5,000 suits. So if, if the difference from a $100 suit to a $500 suit, people start treating me like the President of the United States, just imagine when I start wearing $5,000 suits, people start treating me like I was the king of a country. True story. So I wanted to encourage you guys to go over there. It's very affordable, very stylish. If you see something you like, at checkout, use code OG to get a 15% discount. And also to help support your boy, because uh, since I've been here, 
and the Philippines. Um, my Patreon has went down because I'm not putting content over there. The coaching calls have slowed down because um, the time difference is I'm 12 hours ahead of you guys. And also, uh, my YouTube revenue is not where it is because I'm not posting daily. Maybe I'm lucky if I can post twice a week. So anyway, you know, support your boy because it takes time to make these videos. I really think about them because I want them to be thought-provoking and help you guys to really not just look at my life, but look at my life as an example. If a 62-year-old dude can, like, reinvent himself, what can you do at 42 or 32 or 22 or, heck, even 14 years old, man? The earlier you start, the better life you're going to have, and the longer you're going to be able to enjoy the good life. So without further ado, I want to get into the topic of today's video, which is the easiest way to get a girlfriend for guys that are used to paying for sex. And why is this video important, guys? I'm going to talk to you. This video is important for three reasons. Number one, a lot of you guys in westernized cultures are paying for sex, dude. A lot of you guys, and you don't have to pay for it. Number two, man. A lot of you guys, man, are treating women like a sex object where you just want to use a woman to release your sexual frustration or your sexual desires. And hey, I understand because when I was a young dude, I used to personally treat women like it was like a workout, dude. So I'm going to be honest with you. Back then, I was uh, I was really into boxing and, and karate and wrestling, right? And so the coaches would tell you, hey, you know, before competition, you can't have sex, man. So... Maybe for not three months before uh, before a bout, a competition bout, you wouldn't have any sex. So then win, lose, or draw, you know what I mean? You get like a, you get like a break or some downtime. Let's say for a month, you take a month off. And so then what I would do is I was, I was lifting weights like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday doing a whole body routine. And then on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I would um, have sex with a young lady to release my testosterone. But I wasn't busting nuts daily and all this kind of crazy stuff. So it was just like a workout, getting in sets and reps. But as I matured as a man, I started understanding the value of women, man. Women, I'm going to tell you the value of women in your life, dude. For those of you who are in cells, which stands for involuntarily celibate, meaning that you couldn't get a girlfriend even if you wanted to pay for one. And you guys that are TFLs, it stands for True Force Lonely, meaning that you want a girlfriend at all costs, but the girl's friends don't want you. And I want to share with you the value that a woman brings to your life outside of sex, bro. And I learned this the hard way because growing up in the hood and going to the community center and the boys clubs and always being a boxer and a taekwondo dude and a karate dude and wrestling and playing sports and lifting weights, I associated with a lot of alpha males. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, dude. Like, I think what makes me an exceptional person I've never been the alpha of the alpha when you start talking about being in these alpha male groups. What I have been is the beta male and the alpha, not in the sense that I let women walk over me, but in the sense that the dudes I'm hanging around with are six foot ten, seven foot giants, athletic specimens, dude, hitting the genetic lottery. They smoke me in sports, fighting, martial arts, lifting, where they just smoke me. Well, what did I learn? And I was telling my girlfriend the other day, this is a key lesson I learned is that you learn from losing. If you get your ass kicked and handed to you by genetic savages, bro, and you continue to understand that the more you work on yourself, the better you become. And maybe you never win a championship, but you understand your market, you understand where you fall in the marketplace as far as you dealing with savage barbarian men, and you understand what it takes to keep the savages at bay. I think that is the most valuable lesson of sports and competitive situations because you can't always be the alpha at alpha. This is just not possible. Yes, you can be an alpha in certain situations like I'm the alpha of my life. I'm not the alpha of the alphas, guys. There's too many tall, strong, genetically gifted guys. But can I learn from associating with alphas? Sure. So the moral to the story is when you hang around a lot of alphas, dude, you have a different perspective on life. And you need feminine energy to balance out. You need feminine emotions and a feminine mentality to help you be civilized, dude. Because let me tell you something. If the alphas ruled the world, it would be a savage world, a savage barbarian. So yeah, I'm a savage barbarian, but there's men more savage than me. This is what kills me about people when they meet me. 
whether it's here in Southeast Asia or Europe or even in America, bro, people say, oh, gee, you're such a savage barbarian. You're just so scary. And I tell them like this, hey, guys, there's guys in this world 10 times scarier than me and 10 times more savage and 10 times more barbarian. I think the only thing that helps me have a happy life is when I'm around savage barbarians. They understand. I might not be the alpha and alpha, but I'm a savage barbarian. And you will know by no means progress upon me, my friend, because I'm willing to give my life. And here's the caveat. I want to share with you guys this statement that I used to say to guys when I was in the belly of the beast, that I'm willing to give my life. Here's the caveat. I want you to understand. And I'm not condoning violence. I'm not condoning a savage barbarian mentality. What I'm condoning is this. If a man who is bigger or stronger or more violent than me is willing to aggress upon me, this is what I'm willing to do, my friend. I'm willing to give my life with the exact purpose of knowing that you're going to give your life as well. I'm going to give my life to take your life. And that's a very interesting mindset if you can understand that. Anybody talking about, oh man, I'm going to fight to the death and you can't fight because you're a Pee Wee Herman type dude. That doesn't, that's not a threat to anybody. But if you tell a big, strong, savage barbarian, hey, my friend, you might be bigger and stronger and, and more violent and crazier than me, but I'll tell you what, my friend, if we go into battle, I will give my last breath to have you understand you're going to give your last breath as well because whatever death deadly blow you're going to give me instead of me being a victim and a wimpy, oh, my God, I'm done. I'm going to just, I'm going to take the knife out of my neck. Said, that was pretty good, mate, but let me see how you can take it. And I'm going to stick the knife in your neck, and we're going to go to Valhalla together. So enough negativity. Let's go positive today. So like I said, the topic of today's video is the easiest way to get a girlfriend for guys who always pay for sex. And I want to get down to the nitty gritty of this, guys. Here's the problem. A lot of guys who pay for sex are delusional. They tell themselves like, oh, I'm too busy with my work. Or I don't get a chance to go out and meet women. Or I'm so busy with work and school, like I'm trying to become the best version of myself. Or I don't have time to date women because I'm just, my life is so complicated. Just all these different excuses. And what I want to share with you is the reason they're excuses. You should always be on your path to become a best version of yourself. And I was telling my girlfriend this, this is how I view men. This is why I don't have compassion for homeless men or poor men. As long as God gives you strength and power, dude, and you're able to ambulate, which means to walk freely, you're not disabled, then I don't care if you got to work two and three jobs, man, to get your income where you need it to be. Or if you're smart like me, you're playing a long game. When I used to work at Walmart, I was going to school. I worked at Walmart at night, and I was going to school during the day. Why Walmart? Because Walmart hires people with questionable backgrounds. They don't do background checks. You can work there. I worked with a lot of dudes I knew formerly that were incarcerated, worked at Walmart. I was actually working the stock room. I was stocking the shelves at night. I eventually got my forklift license. I would take stuff off the truck, take the older items that were going to expire, put them in front, and take the newer items, put them in back, and restock the shelves, clean up the cardboard and all the wrappings. Then during the day, I can go to school to study up on my computer um, I switched over into computer network security um, because that was a new field coming out and I wanted to get away from being a builder of servers, you know, computer servers. I wanted to get more into network security, which is more like software type stuff. So I took a cut, a pay and cut, and I worked at Walmart at night, went to school during the day, only had to do that for one year because I took a course on Network security is a one-year course with the Cisco certification for firewalls. So one year, my life changed. So sometimes you got to take a step back or take two steps forward. So what I'm trying to say is if you're playing the long game, it doesn't matter what your job is, whether you work at McDonald's or you work in the Walmart or Target. Go to school and learn a trade. Like I would say get into AI, which stands for artificial intelligence or into uh, actually coding in Python or something like that where you can actually write code for robotics, get into robotics or AI. That's the new way to become uh, a millionaire, my friend. That is the new trajectory. Whether you're young or old alike, start studying artificial intelligence, robotics, 
your life is going to change because that's where everything's heading. So back to the top of the video, guys. This is for the the easiest way to grow, get a girlfriend for guys who always pay for sex. And here's the whole thing. You have to switch your mindset from looking at women as like a sex object. Yeah, women are beautiful and sexy. Yes, they help you to relieve your stress and your aggression. But here's this one little trick I'm going to give you when, you when you do this. One little switch in the way that you view women. Then you won't have to pay for sex anymore. Here's what it is, guys. Even this is for guys who have money. See, a lot of rich guys who have money, they just look at women like commodities, like, oh, I pay for what I want. And we're talking about Dan Bazilian, and we're talking about French and Fit, and these type of dudes, right? You want to take a playbook out of Curtis Thomas's playbook. He's very rich. He's a millionaire. He's rich and powerful. This dude, man, when I lived with him, man, I lived with Curtis, man, for about 10 years, bro, because he was a vice president of IT. He got me in to work for his IT company. He didn't do a background check because he knew me. And uh, the guy taught me about coding and, and, and servers and uh, network administration and also customer service, how to deal with people. But the most important point he taught me was this. This is a rich dude, and he would regularly have women be giving him tens of thousands of dollars, buying him Rolexes. One lady, this is a true story. One lady bought him a brand new Mercedes SUV. Brand new. And this was my dream car. She just bought it for him, signed it over. I'm like, this dude paying his mortgage. It was just crazy, the skill he had. This dude was rich. So what I'm trying to say to you is a, it's a mindset that the choice I want to share with you, and this is even for rich guys that have money, where you're just thinking, oh, I can just pay for women because I'm rich. No. You're a buster and a chump and a simp. You're a trick. And here's the one mindset I want to share with you guys before I go. You go from being a trick and a buster paying women for sex and you're thinking you're higher than a woman because you're paying a woman for sex. But let me share something with you. You are actually beneath the woman. Here's why. You're either a consumer or a producer. Let me say this to you again, guys. You're either a consumer, which means you're purchasing goods and services, or you're a producer, meaning that you're producing and people are purchasing your stuff. So don't get it twisted. You rich guys thinking that, oh, I'm rich, I can just pay for women because I'm busy. No, that's a cop-out. Here's what Curtis taught me. You go from being a chump and a trick and a buster and a simp by this one little mind trick I'm going to share with you, and the word is mentorship. So what happens if you're rich and powerful and you're successful and you're dressing nice and you're driving Mercedes Benz and Rolls Royces and, and uh, Porsches, right? And women see you with your Rolexes and all this stuff, your five and ten thousand dollar suits and everything, right? Your designer shoes. A woman's attracted to that. High quality women, beautiful women are attracted to that. And here's how you have um, the special women in your life. You want a girlfriend and you don't have to pay for sex. This is the this this is the million dollar key I'm gonna give you to gay guys. For you guys don't think I have game, shut the fuck up, you might learn something. It's called mentorship. And what does that mean, OG? What it means is whether the woman's younger than you, dude, or she makes less money than you, dude, or she's less educated than you, what you do is when this woman hangs around you, you will teach her how to become the best version of herself. How? About three ways. Number one, dude, just her associating with you, she's going to see how you live, how you traverse through the world, how you talk to people. A lot of people learn from experience. Number two, you're going to have intimate conversations with this young lady or this woman. Like, hey, what are your plans and your dreams and your goals and your aspirations? You get her to start understanding you have to plan today for tomorrow. And here's number three and the most important one you can do for this woman that's going to have you not have to pay for sex because she views you in a mentor, mentor, -y, mentor relationship where she values you and she puts you on a pedestal you will actually mentor her and guide her into what she should do with her life in order for her to get to a status or a level that she's comfortable with because let me tell you something guys everybody talks about they want to be rich and i was telling my girlfriend yoni this man but not everybody's willing to put in the work curtis thomas taught me what it takes to be rich jim Rohn taught me what it takes to be rich anthony robbins taught me what it takes to be rich brian tracy taught me what it takes to be rich. If you don't know these people, Google them. These people I had the pleasure of meeting them. They taught me what it takes to be rich. 
And it's not just hard work, but it's working smarter, not harder. Meaning that you have to leverage education, you have to leverage relationships, you have to leverage your network at work, whether it's your social network, your professional network, your business network. Curtis Thomas taught me to go to conferences and seminars and to hobnob and rub elbows with the rich and powerful people and put yourself in a position where you can be of service to the rich people. Because let me share something with you. The more people that know you and like you and the more people that you help, the more people that are going to be willing to help you. So I know you guys don't like long videos, man. So let me just say that this was one of the best gems I've ever given any of you guys. And this is supersedes Patreon, coaching calls, all of that, because I had an epiphany yesterday. Me and my girlfriend went to the Taekwondo Championships here in the Philippines. It was mind-boggling, the number of people there traveling from different places. This was the Filipino National Taekwondo Championships. I got footage I'm going to start putting up. But as of tomorrow, I'm going to clean out all my back catalog of my videos from Patreon. I'm going to just start. So I'm not spamming you guys. I'm just catching up on all the great videos I had on Patreon, showing my adventures here in the Philippines before I put the Taekwondo National Championships. If you like this video, man, give a thumbs up, man. Leave a comment, man. Let me know how you felt. Appreciate you guys, man, being more interactive. Leave a comment, man. Thanks for the love. You guys share with me your stories. Hey, man. I'm feeling like I'm building a new community. It's, it's going to be even greater than the community I had in California and even greater than the one I had in Vegas. It's going to be my community here. I got love for you guys. appreciate you guys. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe because as I'm saying, I see a lot of you guys commenting, but YouTube now has a feature where it shows who's subscribed and who's not. So for those of you who's new to the channel, Keep coming back. I'm going to just download to you, man, a lot of information from a 62-year-old dude who has reinvented his life because I had an epiphany. And now that I'm older and wiser, I'm going to get information to you so you don't have to wait to be 62 years old to be the captain of your ship and the king of your castle. And so until next time, OG7 back. Out.